So, hello, and thank you for joining me. I think this is the eighth video recording that uh, I've done, so this one will be the hour-long video. Um, I hope everybody's still doing okay and finding the benefit out of these sessions. Uh, so we're concentrating a little today on the seated poses. So you, uh, equipment you will need is something to sit on, uh, a replacement for a belt, a strap, um, so uh, dressing gown belts are good. Um, I also heard a funny story yesterday about uh, another yoga teacher um, when on, she was on a Zoom one so she could see everybody and one of her students used a dog lead which I thought was quite ingenious. Um, however, her dog obviously thought it was going for a walk there and was jumping all over. <laughs> um, so make sure you do it, sneak it away secretly from your dog if you're using that. Um, you'll need um, a replacement for bricks, so you can use books or something around that size. And I think that's it for today. Okay, so just beginning by sitting on some height to bring your knees down so that the knees are level with the hips and you're not holding any tension at the top of the legs. And just move the buttock flesh out to the sides. So just find your sitting bones. So feel that you're separating the sitting bones so the base is broad. And just creep your feet under a little further underneath the opposite knee so that the legs are quite narrow. Obviously if there's any knee problems or hip problems sitting in cross legs is not comfortable for you. You can either switch your feet round to the sides sitting on quite you know you would want to be sat a little high uh, when we do this Virasana to start with so that you will be comfortable for a few minutes. Or you can stretch your legs out straight of course if that other position isn't appropriate for your legs. So use your thumbs on your supports now just begin to lengthen your spine upwards. So drawing up through the crown of your head and then roll your shoulders back and then just let the shoulders release down the back. So the trapezius muscles softening down the upper back towards the back waist. And just moving the bottom tips of the shoulder blades forwards into the back towards the front chest. And then just let your eyes close. And just shutting everything else out now, just being aware of your body. Take your attention to your legs and make sure that they are comfortable and relaxed. You've not begun to tense from the top of the legs. And then feel that you're sitting evenly over both sitting bones and that you're not leaning forwards or backwards. Now keeping the outer shoulders back, so keeping the openness of your chest on your hands. Just bring the base of the thumb so that they're in contact with the chest bone. And then your eyes releasing downwards and quietening. So just releasing any tension in the face. The forehead soft. And then bringing your awareness to your breath. Notice how you're breathing. So gradually begin to guide your breath so it becomes smooth and even. So just following the flow of your breath in and out through the nostrils.
keep your chest lifted up now. Just lower your head down, bringing the chin towards your chest. And release your hands, just rest the back of the hands onto your legs. So open your eyes slowly towards the floor. Slowly raise your eyes and your head to level. Okay, so as you are, we're just going to interlock your fingers there. So turn the palms. So open the palms. So push the palms away from you. And then stretch your arms up. So keeping the openness of the palms towards the ceiling. But draw the upper arms closer in towards your ears. So just feel the length on the sides of the body. So bring your arms down. And then we're just going to twist around to your right. So if you have got some lean back, depending on how high you sat on, if you're leaning back to reach the floor, take something for your hand. But use the other hand on the leg. So draw the chest bone round. So come back to face forwards. So interlock your fingers the other way. So you bring in the other little finger onto the bottom. So turn your palms and stretch the arms up again. Again, so opening your palms, so draw the upper arms in. And then Lower your arms and turn to your left. And use your hand on the leg. So you pull in with that hand to so draw the chest round. So come back to face forwards. So we're just going to cross your legs the other way and repeat that. So if you come back to your automatic interlock again and making sure that the fingers are interlock right down to the webbing. So turn the palms, so open the palms, stretch your arms up. So we're drawing the outer upper arms in, so lift the side ribs. So lower your arms and twist to your right again. And so just lifting away from those back fingertips, so turn the chest, come back to face forwards, and change your interlock over once more, so your unnatural interlock again. Turn the palms away, and stretch your arms up. And open your palms, draw the outer upper arms in, and lower the arms, and turn to your left. So you pull with the hand, turn your chest. Okay, and then come back to face forwards now. And just release your legs out straight for a moment. So just stretch your legs in dandas now. Let the knees readjust for a moment or two. So we're going to come and sit back on your heels next. So to come forwards in a double kovarasana. So if you can't sit directly on your heels, um, then you can take something on top of the heels. If there are any knee problems, because I'm not quite sure who um, is using the videos, I'll just quickly show you a chair variation of this as well. <clears throat> so you would need two chairs. Facing each other like so. Just back a little way so you can see it. So you would just sit like this on the chair, depending on your knees, if you're able to tuck them under a little further, but making sure that your feet are firmly on the ground, so either at 90 degrees 
or just taking the feet back a little bit further. And then so you would reach forward to the chair and just slide the chair forwards away from you. So it's just, it's a similar um, nice stretch through the back body. your heels so making sure that you're firmly down on your heels your knees are wide and then come forwards now if your head doesn't reach the floor don't pull the hips forward to find the floor take something underneath your head and just have your hands at least as wide as your shoulders so where you can straighten the elbows and spread the fingers. So you want the forearms to be lifted away from the mat. If you do struggle to straighten your elbows fully, just go wider apart with your hands. And just see if you can creep your hands a little further forward. So that you're just extending forwards a little more. Okay, and then from there, so we're going to come up onto your hands and knees, coming into dog down. So we'll take the little fingers, little toes to the outer edges of your mat for the first one. So bring your middle finger so it's facing forwards. Just spread the fingers first of all, and making sure that the whole hand is pressing. So often if fingers are tight, the hands want to, uh, if finger joints are stiff, the hands want to claw away from the mat. So try and press down through the base of your fingers and then push up from there and just come into dog down. And I'm just keeping the knees slightly bent to start with so while we get the stretch of the spine first of all. So often it's tight hamstrings can stop you getting the full stretch through the back. But really feel that you're lengthening your side ribs. Now lift the sitting bones up towards the ceiling. So we're going to keep, try and keep that height in the hips, keep the stretch of the spine as you slowly push your thighs back and stretch your heels down towards the floor. So just making sure that your feet are pointing straight back and push your thighs back so the back of the knees are open. Okay, and then from there, if you bend your knees and walk your feet forwards, so we're coming into Uttanasana. Okay, so if you can't reach the floor easily, take whatever you're using instead of bricks for your hands. So your books, whatever. But just line the little toe side of your feet up so they're covering the outer edges of your mat. And then, so if we just bring the weight back into your heels for a moment, just lift up onto your heels. So spread your toes. And then just lengthen, broaden your feet as you bring them down again. Okay, so the outer feet are firmly down, so the insteps are lifted, the caps are pulled up. And just find, again, where you're evenly balanced across the ball pads and your heel. And then without disturbing the feet, now just hold your elbows and allow your body to hang downwards. Just let your head release down. So let the waist area release down, the side ribs. Okay, and then coming back to dog down. So if you need to, bend your knees. Now place your hand shoulder width apart. Again, making sure that we've spread the fingers first of all. 
And then step your feet back and come back to dog down again. So the feet are as wide as the hips now. And again, so we'll just lift your heels for a moment, bend your knees slightly. Now get the stretch of your spine. So from your hands to the outer hips. And then so lift your sitting bones. Now try not to disturb the spine. Slowly begin to push your thighs back and straighten your legs. And then just bring your knees back onto the floor and come back to your heels. Just stretch forwards for a moment. And then so just walk your hands back in to come back up. Sorry, my cat stripe has joined me at the moment. I'm just going to very quickly feed her, otherwise she won't leave me for the entire class. <laughs> the joys of home filming. Okay, so we're going to lie down next. So you'll need your belt. I'm just going to stretch the legs in Sutta Padangasasana. So we're going to just take your belt around the ball pads of your right foot. So bring your leg up so it's at a 90 degree angle to your body. And if you walk your hands along the belt until your arms are straight, but keeping the outer shoulders on the floor, so watch that the shoulders aren't pulling up. Okay, so I'm using the belt there just to draw the toe pads down towards me. So the heels stretching up towards the ceiling. And I'm pushing the front of the thigh away from me. Yeah, now try not to disturb that leg as you stretch your other leg straight out on the floor. Okay, so the inner thigh of your left leg is rolling down towards the floor, bringing yourself onto the centre back of that heel. And press the left thigh. And then, so if you can, you're just going to begin to bring your leg a little bit closer over towards you. Now, without force, so we want to keep that knee straight. So if you do find that you bring it over, then your knee won't straighten. Just go back and wait. Just giving your leg time to stretch. And keeping the left thigh pressing down towards the floor. Okay, so we're going to take that leg back to a 90 degree angle and then we're going to change your legs over. So bring your left foot up to join the right in the belt and then stretch your right leg straight out. So push the front of your thigh away from you. So you're pushing the front thigh towards the back thigh. The back thigh, the back of the knee should feel open. So you're rolling the right inner thigh down towards the floor. So you're on the centre back of the heel there. And press your right thigh. And then we'll just begin to bring your leg a little bit further over. Gradually. Again, if you can, so don't force the leg. We want to be where we can keep the knee straight, the thigh pushing away from you. Okay, so bring your leg back up. So we're going to change feet over in the belt again and we're going to take the leg out to the side to stretch the inner leg next. Now first of all just hold your belt in your uh, left hand for a moment. 
So take your thumb into the outer hip on the right side. So move the outer hip away from the waist. And then, so without shortening that side, then take your belt in your right hand. And we're just going to take your left foot a little further to the left, just for more stability. So you can bring your left hand onto the front of the left hip. But really work the left leg, press your thigh towards the floor. And then slowly begin to bring your leg out to the side. So just going straight out in line with the hip to begin with. So notice if you have rolled a long way. So if that left hip has lifted away from the floor, so you can use your hand there to push the hip down. But if you feel like you've rolled a long way and are twisting a lot, go take the leg back up, go a little bit slower. And then, so you're just gonna bring your elbow onto the floor. So then just see if you can bring your foot a little bit higher towards the shoulder. So without bending the knee, so keep your right thigh pushing away from your body. Okay, so bend your knee now, so bring your leg back up and then change your legs over. Okay, so again, first if we just hold the belt in your right hand, so use your thumb into the left outer hip. Just hook the outer hip away from your waist. And then, so watch that that hip doesn't raise as you hold the belt in your left hand now. So take your right foot a little further to the right. And so press your right thigh towards the floor first of all. So keep working that leg now as you begin to take the left leg sideways. And then so if you bring your elbow onto the floor then, then see if you can lift your foot a little higher towards the shoulder. Again without bending that knee, so I'm still pushing that thigh away from the body. Okay, and then Bend your knee to bring your leg back up. So before we release the leg, just draw the foot over towards your face so it's lengthening your lower back. And then we'll just bend your knee, bring your legs down to rest for a minute. So if you take your feet as wide as the mat and just let your inner knees rest against each other. So if you just bring your feet back together now, so turn yourself over to the side. So we're just going to turn back over onto your hands and knees and come into dog down. So if you take your hands as wide as your shoulders, so I'm starting with the knees directly underneath the hips, but just taking the hands a little further forward of the shoulders, so fingers are spread. And then just push up from there to come into dog down. So push the thighs back, stretch your heels down towards the floor. So see if we can get the heels a little bit closer towards the floor this time. Okay, and then from there, if you bend your knees and walk your feet forwards, so coming into Uttanasana, but this time we're taking the feet as wide as the hips. So the inner feet are parallel with each other this time. Now, again, if you struggle to reach the floor, just take your replacement bricks. So you've just got the hands underneath the shoulders there. So push your thighs back and just look forwards and extend your spine forwards. So lift the outer shoulders up away from the floor. 
Okay, now if you do need supports for your hands, you're just going to stay as you are and keep working on extending your spine forwards. So if your hands go easily down to the floor, then from there we're going to walk your hands back and bring your hands to the outside of your feet. So if your hands are down very easily, so if your um, hands are flat, just press the heel of the hand into the floor to take the ribs towards your legs. And then you're just going to let your head release downwards towards the floor. But keeping your kneecaps lifted. Okay, and then if you just walk your hands back to your under your shoulders, if you've walked them back, and look forwards, extend your spine forwards again. And then slowly bring yourself up to standing. Okay, so I'm going to stay standing round to the side. So we will keep the feet as they are, hip distance apart, but standing in Tadasana. So take the outer shoulders back, so you're opening the collarbones. Stretch your arms down so the elbows are locked, fingers are open. And then, so we're just going to inhale and raise your arms so the palms are facing each other. So just stretch upwards so you lengthen the sides of your body. So make sure that the kneecaps are lifted as well as the legs are firm. And then, so we're going to turn the palms to face forwards. On an exhalation, you're just going to fold forwards. Now, again, if you're using supports for your hands, you're just going to fold forwards to there. So if your hands go down easily, you're going to fold forwards and take the hands to the outside of the feet and take the head down. Okay, and then look forwards and extend your spine forwards. Inhale as you come back up, raise your arms, palms facing each other. Feel the lift on your side ribs. So turn your palms to face forwards. So exhale as you fold forwards again. And either hands on supports under the shoulders, hands to the outside of the feet. Just let your head release down. And then look forwards, lift your chest forwards. Inhale as you come up, raise your arms, palms facing each other. And then one more time, turn your palms to face forward. On an exhalation, fold forwards. And so taking your head down if you're taking the hands to the outside of your feet. And then look forwards, lift your chest forwards. Inhale as you raise back up to standing. Okay. So I'm just going to turn and face forwards now. So we're just coming into... Um, wide leg pose, pressing to Padottanasana. So we'll just come to right to the back edge of your mat. <coughs> Excuse me. So step your feet really wide apart. Okay, so just check first that the heels are level with each other. And then, so if you just lift onto your heels, see that the toes are spread and turn your feet slightly in. It will press the outer feet down, so the inner legs are lifting, your inner, the arches of your feet are lifting, your inner ankles, but lifting all the way through to the inner thighs. And then roll your shoulders back, just look up and curve back first and then bend forwards. And bring your hands down underneath your shoulders. 
Now again, if your hamstrings are tight, if you struggle to take the hands down with the knees straight, you can use your supports for your hands. And if you've got support for your hands, you would just stay in this position and extend forwards. Okay, so the outer shoulders are lifted away from the floor. Your chest bone is moving forwards towards the chin. So from there, if your hands do go flat to the floor there, we're gonna walk your hands to in between your feet. And just press the heel of the hand into the floor as you go back. So take the abdomen back between your legs and then release your head downwards. But the legs are firm still, so the kneecaps are pulled up and the legs are lifted. And just let the neck release. So the crown of the head's facing the floor, but see that the shoulders stay lifted away from the floor. So you've got the hands level with the feet, the forearms parallel with each other, the shoulders lifting away from the floor. Okay, and then, so if you've walked the hands back, then we're gonna take your hands back to under your shoulders and then just walk your feet in towards each other to come out. Okay, so from there you're going to turn yourself around to the side and just come and sit back on your heels and rest forwards to the floor. So I've got the arms resting on the floor there rather than extending now. And again, if your head doesn't come to the floor easily, you'll take some support underneath there. But just resting, so allow the weight of your forehead to release into the floor. So bending forwards has a quieting effect on the brain. And just watch your breath for a moment or two and just let the weight of your body release into the floor with exhalations. So we're going to come up to sitting next. So we're going to be it sitting in Varasana. So make sure that you've got something to sit on. So you're going to come up to kneeling first of all, so that your knees are together. We're going to take your feet, separate your feet. So just wider than the hips there. We don't want the feet to go too wide. Now, if you get hold of the calf flesh from the back and just move the calf flesh away from the back of your knee. And then so you're just going to sit down in between your feet. Okay, so don't force this if, if you're struggling to get down. Take as much height as you sit on, uh, as you need to sit on, to be able to sit comfortably for a minute. Um, now again, if, if knees, if there's any knee issues, just sit on a chair instead for this. Um, and again, with, with some, if your feet on something, if needs be, so that your feet are flat on the floor. So we're going to just adjust your feet there. So make sure that your feet are going straight back. And just encourage the little toe side of the foot to go down towards the floor. So the soles of the feet are open, your toe pads are spread. So we're just going to interlock 
the, uh, your fingers there, so turn the palms and stretch your arms up into Varasana. And so you're opening the palms towards the ceiling, so draw the upper arms in. And just take a few breaths there. So as you inhale, draw the upper arms in and lift the side ribs. As you exhale, see if you can bring the arms back a little. But watch that you don't push your head forwards as we're taking the arms back. So the head stays level. Keep the quietness at the back of your neck. Okay, so lower your arms now, but keeping that length in the spine. So notice as the arms come down, do you collapse? So we're just going to twist round to your right side. Now again, if you are sitting quite high for this, you may need to take something for your back hand. If you're sitting on the floor, just keep a bend in that back elbow so that you're not pushing your back shoulder higher. Okay, so use this hand on your leg. And turn. Now we're just going to take a few breaths there. So as you inhale, just lengthen your spine upwards. As you exhale, so you're going to turn the chest bone towards the back shoulder. So you might need to just loosen off a little bit, take another inhalation. So if you push into your full um, a twist, it can be sometimes a little bit more difficult to take um, an inhalation. But inhale, lengthen upwards. Exhale, turn the chest towards the back shoulder. Okay, and then just come back to face forwards. Make sure that you keep that length in the spine. So as we turn forwards, we don't just collapse. So interlock your fingers the other way, so your unnatural way. So turn your palms and stretch up again. And so palms open towards the ceiling, draw the upper arms in. And take a few breaths. So as you inhale, draw the arms in, stretch up, see so lifting the side ribs. As you exhale, see if the arms will come back a little. So lower your arms and turn to your right side, uh, left side, sorry. And making sure that the shoulders stay level so that you're not lifting that back shoulder higher. So this hand is on the outer leg. So I'm pulling with this hand to draw the uh, right side of the back forwards. Again, we're going to take a few breaths there. So as you inhale, lengthen upwards. As you exhale, turn the chest towards your back shoulder. So just bring yourself back to face forwards and then we're just going to carefully stretch your legs out for a minute. So bring your feet into Dandasana, so inner feet together. Okay, and press your thighs towards the floor. So the inner thighs are rolling down. So extend into your inner heels. So you're bringing the big toe joint and the little toe joint level with each other. So just allow your knees to straighten for a moment. Okay, now we're going to come into Paschimottanasana next. So I'm turning to the side so you can see my back. Okay, now if when you sit on the floor, your pelvis is tilting backwards, you're dropping your lower back, then take something to sit on. So just start by moving the buttock flesh, so you're moving it out 
to the side, moving it out behind you at the same time. So you want to feel that your back thighs are moving towards the back edge of your mat. So inner feet, in fact, we'll just separate your feet slightly there. So now use your fingertips on the floor behind you. So lift your lower back. Lengthen your spine upwards. So take the outer shoulders back. So your collarbones are open. And press your thighs towards the floor. And then so you're going to raise your arms. So palms facing each other. And now bend from the top of the legs. Keep stretching up towards the ceiling as you come forwards. And then so you're going to hold your feet. Or if you can't reach the feet, then take your belt around. Okay, but if you find that you're holding the feet and your back is rounding like that, your shoulders are pulled forward, again, take your belt. So you want to feel that you can move the lower back forwards. So lift your side ribs. So the lower back moves forward, side ribs lift, chest bone lifts. Now, again, so if you're using your belt, just stay and work there. So if you're holding your feet, then let your elbows widen out to the side and begin to come forward. So you're bringing the lower ribs forwards towards your legs. But keep your elbows lifted, your elbows wide. So take your head down towards your shins. So keep your thighs pressing down towards the floor. And just stay for a few breaths there. So as you inhale, lift your side ribs forward. As you exhale, soften the back ribs down. Okay, so raise your head, lift your chest, come up and release your feet. Okay, so we're going to sit back in Varasana again. Turn back to face forward. So take whatever you need. Okay, so come uh, to kneeling first of all. Use your hands to move the calf flesh away from the back of the knee. And just adjust your feet again. So interlock your fingers. So turn your palms and stretch your arms up. So palms open, draw the upper arms in, and just take a couple of breaths there. So inhale, lift your side ribs, exhale, can bring the arms back. Again, watch that we're not pushing your head forwards. So lower your arms and twist to your right. And so see, you'll see that your shoulders are level with each other. So we're using this hand on the outer leg, pulling with this hand. But take a few breaths. So inhale, lengthen your spine upwards. Exhale, turn the chest bone towards the back shoulder. And again, you might just need to loosen out slightly to take the inhalations. Come back to face forwards again, keeping the length in the spine, shoulders back. Change your interlock over now. So bring the other little finger onto the bottom, turn your palms and stretch your arms up. Again, so push the palms towards the ceiling. So draw the upper arms in. So inhale, lift your side ribs. Exhale, arms back. And then so bring your arms down. Again, as the arms come down, watch that you don't just collapse. So turn to your left again. So 
hand on the outer calf. So inhale, lengthen upwards. Exhale, turn the chest towards the back shoulder. So you can keep your head looking straight forward so that you're not straining your neck. Just bring yourself back to face forwards and just carefully release your legs out straight. So you might find it a bit easier each time we sit in for asana. You might find you can go a little lower on the support, so just checking in with how it feels. So just stretch the legs in Dandasana for a moment. So really press the thighs towards the floor. Okay, now we're going to come into another forward bend next, so the belt should be close by anyway. Um, so you're going to bend your left leg at the knee. So we're going to take this leg into a Varasana leg. So I've got the thumb behind the knee there just to move the calf flesh away from the back of the knee. And tuck that foot in. Okay, now again, any knee problems, um, you can just stretch both legs out straight, or if that's appropriate for you, you can take the knee out to the side into Jano Sassana. Okay, now so once we've got one leg in Varasana, just make sure that you're not leaning in heavier into the straight leg sitting bone. So if you feel like you're already leaning a long way, sit on some more height. So if you just grab hold of the buttock flesh on the straight leg side and move that out to the side, and we'll take that foot just slightly further to the left for a bit of extra stability. Okay, so you're going to use your fingertips behind you on the floor there to lift your lower back and lengthen your spine upwards. So take your outer shoulders back and then stretch both arms up. So come forward and catch hold of your foot or take your belt. And so we want the outer shoulders to be back. Again, if you do feel like you're rounding your back, make sure that you use your belt. So press your straight leg thigh towards the floor. Okay, so the lower back's moving forwards. So lift your side ribs, lift your chest. And so if you're using a belt, you're just going to work in that position. If you're holding your foot, then exhale, let your elbows widen out to the side and come forwards. So you're, keeping, so you're bringing the lower ribs towards your leg. But again, make sure that you're not beginning to roll off to the straight leg side. So you're taking your head down in between both legs. So it's towards the inner calf of your straight leg. But keep your elbows lifted. And so as you inhale, lift your side ribs forward. And as you exhale, let the back ribs soften down. Okay, and then raise your head and lift the chest and come up. And then just carefully stretch that leg out, join your feet together. Change your legs over. So make sure that you move that flesh away from the back of your knee. And then again, feel whether you're rolling to your left side. So just move the buttock flesh out to the side. Sometimes that can be all it needs just to level yourself up and take that foot slightly to um, further out, just slightly. And then, so bring your fingertips behind you now. So lengthen upwards, shoulders back. Extend your arms up. 
So be very conscious that you're bending from the top of the legs as you begin to come forward and hold your foot. Okay, now lift your side ribs. So lift the chest bone. So lift your lower ribs and outer shoulders back. Again, so if you're holding your belt, work as you are. If you're holding your foot, exhale, let the elbows widen out to the side and come forwards. So head down towards the inner calf. So make sure that you've not rolling, level yourself back up. And take a few breaths there. So inhale, lift the side ribs forward. Exhale, let the back ribs soften towards the floor. So that you're not hard in the back. And keeping your hands fairly soft as well. So if you're pulling, if you're tensing your hands and pulling with the hands, then you will feel quite hard in your back. Keep your elbows lifted. And then raise your head and lift your chest before you release and come up. So stretch that leg back out for a moment. So join your feet, just stretch your legs in Dandasana. Okay, so we're going to bring both legs back into Varasana. Repeat that again. So adjust your feet again. Make sure that your feet are going straight back. The soles of your feet are open and facing up towards the ceiling. So interlock your fingers, turn your palms and stretch your arms up. And open your palms, draw the upper arms in. So inhale, lift your side ribs. Exhale, arms back. Now keep that length, lower your arms and turn to your right side. Lengthen your spine upwards. Exhale, draw the chest bone towards your back shoulder. So come back to face forwards, just straighten up. Again, making sure that you don't drop as you come back to face forwards. Change your interlock over once more. So turn your palms. Stretch your arms back up again. So palms open. So draw the upper arms in. So inhale, lift your side ribs. Exhale, arms back. So lower your arms and twist to your left side. So inhale. Lengthen upwards and exhale, turn. So turn the chest bone towards the back shoulder. Again, head level. If you keep your head level so that you're not pulling and straining with your neck. And then so bring yourself back to face forwards. Again, making sure that you've not collapsed. You keep kept that length. And then carefully release your legs straight out. And just stretch your legs for a moment in that dasana. Okay, so we're coming into another forward bend now. So <clears throat> belt there if you need it. So we're going to bend up your right leg, the knee, so we're going to place the sole of the foot against your inner thigh. Okay, and I'm just using the hand into the back of the thigh there to turn the thigh bone outwards. Now if your shin is waving around in the air, sit 
it on some height just to bring that knee down and you can also so if it's still not down when you're sitting on height then you'll just take something under your knee okay so just bring the fingertips either side of your straight leg to begin with then lengthen your spine upwards turn your chest towards the straight leg and then stretch both arms up so come forwards so catch hold of your foot or take your belt if you need to okay so you move the lower back forwards so you lift your side ribs up again take the outer shoulders back now again if you're working with your belt just carry on working in that position so if you're holding your foot with an exhalation let the elbows widen out to the side and come forwards so you're bringing your head down towards the shin so turn the chest towards the straight leg okay and keep your bent knee pressing Now again, take a few breaths there. So as you inhale, lift the side ribs forward. So as you exhale, let the back ribs soften down. The elbows are lifted. And again, keeping your hands soft. So you're not pulling forwards and hardening the back. Just let your back ribs soften towards the floor. Okay, and then raise your head and lift the chest, lift the side ribs, release your foot and come up. So just release that leg straight out and then change legs. Okay, now it may be different from one side to the other. So again, just check what height you need to sit on on this side. So if the shin's waving around in the air, sit on some height to bring it down if you're sitting on height and it's still away from the floor just take something under there to press the knee into okay so bring one hand in front of you one hand behind just lengthen your spine upwards turn your chest to look towards your straight leg and then stretch your arms up come forwards and catch hold Okay, so lift your side ribs, lift your chest, move the lower back forwards, so outer shoulder back. And then if you're holding your foot, exhale, widen the elbows outwards and come forwards. So turn the chest towards the straight leg, keep your elbows lifted, relax your hands. Again, as you inhale, lift, move the side ribs forward. As you exhale, soften your back ribs down. So head down towards your shin. And then raise your head, lift your chest, and bring yourself and then just carefully stretch your legs out. Just stretch your legs in Dandasana for a moment. Okay, so we are going to lie down now for the last few minutes. So make sure that you've got a clear space around you for Shavasana. So if you want to just move, Make sure all your equipment is moved out of the way so you're not going to have clutter around you. So even with the eyes closed, you do just feel the clutter around you if the thing's too close to you. Okay, so if you start from bent legs, so just raise your hips for a moment, stretch the back of the hips towards your heels, then bring your tailbone onto the floor and just slowly ease yourself down from there. 
So unrolling your spine down to the floor. So if you prefer to keep your legs bent for your lower back, just step your feet wide on your mat from there and keep the inner knees resting against each other. So you can always keep the legs bent for the first minute. So some, obviously they're quite um, strong stretches of the back. So you can, if you're feeling that a little bit, keep your legs bent for the first minute and you can stretch your legs out when you feel ready to. So just carefully stretching your legs out one at a time. Then lift your shoulders one at a time and roll your shoulders under. So your shoulders are down away from the ears. So just rest your arms a little way from your body. So turn the palms of your hands to face upwards. And just draw the chin towards your chest, so the back of the neck's long. So you can take either a blanket or a cushion or something underneath your head if your head tilts backwards when you're on the floor. So we want the chin and the forehead to be level with each other. So just be conscious. Is your body level? So just be aware of your legs the legs separated evenly? Are the arms separated evenly away from the body? So just be conscious of the contact between the body and the floor. So where uh, your feet are on the floor. Is it the same on both legs, on both feet? So be aware of your calf flesh and just making any minor adjustments that you need to now if you don't feel even on both sides. So be aware of the back of your hips, the back of your shoulders, the back of your arms and the back of the hands. So just notice which knuckles are in contact with the floor on each hand. Is it the same? Again, adjust if you need to. Might be that you can't get the legs up for the same, particularly if it's a shoulder issue, but we're just trying to bring as much evenness through the body as we can. So just letting go completely. So let your Lower back release towards the floor. So let the weight of your skull release, the back of the necks releasing towards the floor. So let the back of your wrists release downwards. So any other areas of the body that aren't in contact with the floor. Maybe your ankles, maybe the back of the knees. Allow those areas to release downwards. And then just observing your breath. And notice the quality of your breath now. inhalations and exhalations.
your inhalation slightly deeper. Can you begin to just bring your awareness back to your body again. So just move your fingers, your toes first of all. And when you're ready, just bend your knees. So roll over onto your right side. And just take your upper arm underneath your head so that your neck is staying in line with the rest of your spine. Just stay there on your side with your eyes closed for a moment or two. So from there, keeping your eyes closed, Use your left hand on the floor, press your hand into the floor to raise yourself back to sitting. Now bring yourself back into cross legs if you're comfortable in cross legs. If not, you can either stretch your legs out straight or sit on your heels. So bring your hands onto your legs and just extend your spine upwards, shoulders back. So just reflecting on how you feel now. how your body feels but also how you're feeling mentally as well so forward bends are quietening so hopefully you should feel the benefits of that now so you're breathing smooth steady even so join your hands together just bringing the base of your thumbs to connect to the chest bone, to your heart area. Surrender your brain down towards your heart. So just take a moment to give thanks for the practice of yoga, for all the yogis before us. enjoyed that hope legs backs and minds feel good so i will see you all next week